Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Esports Report Daily Update. I'm Chris Puckett, and today we have a very special show. We're going to be talking about some changes made to the Call of Duty Season 1 League PAX format. This, is, of course, is the playoffs. We started with 10 teams in the Call of Duty League. Now we're going to go down to the top six. Not online anymore. We're moving it to LAN, and they'll be playing for $15,000. Now, earlier last week, they announced some details around how the tournament format would take place. Those details have changed due to some player and team feedback. The commissioner talked to several players as well as some of the other management here at MLG, and we made some adjustments that I think everyone will enjoy. So let's take a look at the format for packs. Originally, it was going to be a single elimination best of 11 matches from top to bottom. Now those six teams will be competing in a double elimination bracket, best of fives with a $15,000 prize pool. So if the number one and number two teams on that day meet up earlier in the bracket, it will no longer be single elimination. The second place team has a chance of going all the way through that lower bracket to the grand finals once again. So speaking of brackets, a lot of people are wondering, well, don't phase and complexity kind of get an advantage because they started off with the first and second seed. Well, they still do. Don't worry. The six teams will have, of course, the bottom four playing in the first round of that bracket. Then they'll move on to play either phase or complexity. As we're getting the bracket loaded up, I'll go ahead and tell you the first matches that you'll see in that round one. And here they are. Strictly Business and Curse Las Vegas will face off. Phase gets a bye with their number one seed. And on the other side, Complexity gets a bye with their number two seed. Team Envy was the sixth seed coming in. They'll face off against third seeded Team Caliber. Meanwhile, four and five, Curse Las Vegas and Strictly Business will definitely be a match to look out for. So we'll start the day off with two incredible matches. Strictly Business, Curse Las Vegas, Caliber and Envy, the winners of those matches facing off against FaZe or Complexity. Now, what gets me excited about this is a complexity, or excuse me, an Envy Caliber rematch that we'll have a great opportunity to see guaranteed, but then possibly an Envy Complexity rematch. Now at the Call of Duty Championships, it was a blowout, 3-0. Everyone who tuned in for the final said, wow, that was over fast. They expected the one to go to the distance. Well, you gotta think that Envy, they just ran out of gas in the tank and Complexity was ready gunning for that matchup. This time, Envy will have a nice warm-up before placing Complexity. Will things be different this time around? It is a best of five once again. I'm hoping we see a little bit of mixed results or at least go all the way to game five like we saw Optic take them. On the other side, I don't know who to pick here. Curse Las Vegas is not the squad that they started the online league with, but Mud Dog has been filling in and they've been doing incredibly well with him as a substitute. He will officially be playing with Las Vegas at that PAX event, according to Parasite when I talked to him this past weekend. And they have the opportunity to go up against Strictly Business in the very first round. Now, SB, of course, finished fourth overall at COD Champs. They made some serious bank and proved to all the haters that US Championships was not a fluke. They are a top contender in the Call of Duty scene. I. You have to think that Strictly Business has the edge here, but Curse Las Vegas might be able to pull off the first upset there at PAX. Now, there's a lot of unconfirmed details up to this point, but I wanted to go ahead and share some of the stuff I've been talking about today in the offices and around the studio. Of course, we have announced our two casters today, at least two of possible three. That's right, my co-casters for the event, we have Revan, from New York, and we have Nade Shot from Optic Gaming. Both of these guys, incredibly well-known players in the league, phenomenal players in their own right, and now they'll have an opportunity to join me in the casting booth to provide some excellent commentary. I know everyone is excited about this. This is the first time that Nade Shot has really done commentary for a full event. Uh, Revan, you saw him throughout Black Ops 2. You saw him here in, New York, in the New York City studio with me and at last year's PAX. So he is making his return. But I'm really excited about this. I've never had the opportunity to cast with Nate. He has so much player insight, and he knows the guys better than anyone as a contender who was competing in this league. Same thing with Revan. So I have a feeling they'll be dropping knowledge bombs all weekend long when it comes to search and destroy. I know people were upset when I missed Nate Shot's ace at the US Championship, so I'm just going to give him the controller and let him direct the broadcast. Uh, but no, really looking forward to having Nate Shot and Revan. So make sure you're hopping on Twitter, congratulating them on their appearance at PAX and letting them know how excited you are to hear from them. 
Now, we talked a little bit about the tournament format. We talked a little bit about the casters. Let's show you what the players are competing for. It's going to be a $15,000 prize pool. And originally, we had third place. It was a tie. So that was going to be $2,000 each. Now, because it's double elimination and no longer a single elimination bracket, that matchup is going to become even more important between third and fourth. So $2,500 to third. Fourth is taking home 1500 but really everyone wants to know who is going to get that $7,000 grand prize and who will be joining them in the finals. I want to get your predictions, guys. Hit me up on Twitter. I'll be reading some of them off throughout the show. I'm at MLG Puckett. Remember, your six teams competing. Strictly business in Curtis, Las Vegas. Let's show you the bracket one more time. You're going to see Envy versus Caliber in round one. Then FaZe and Complexity are going into round two thanks to their buy. These are the final six of 10 teams. Of course, Justice, Optic Gaming, Curse Youth, and Curse Loss, or excuse me, and Curse New York did not qualify for top six. So they will be sitting on the sideline. Nade Shot and Revan will be joining me in the casting booth. Pretty excited about this tournament. I can't lie. Last time we were in the Turtle Beach booth at the last PAX, that was over in Seattle. We had an incredible event. We started off with a lot of pool play, which then extended into just a four team. Uh, bracket. This time around, having six teams, double elimination. It's going to be spread across three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. going to be a phenomenal event. And I've already been talking with people in the office about an all-star game. So tomorrow, look for details right here on the ESR Daily Update of how you can vote for your favorite players to compete in the all-star game. It's looking like we'll have about four hours to work with on Friday. So I'm thinking for the first time, do we go outside of the box and have more than two teams, maybe four different super squads put together here? Let me know your thoughts. What would make the best all-star game in your mind? Send me your tweets today. Once again, the best tweets will make it on the show. So that's our PAX Rundown. If you guys have any other questions, make sure to hit me up. And of course, you can follow all of our uh, standings up to this point. You can go to www mlg.tv slash cod league click on the standings you can see how phase and complexity got on top of that leaderboard curse las vegas was leading for a while they do finish in the top five but do not get that first round by so that's packs aside i do have a special guest to be uh coming on the show today it's gonna be smiting fatty you know him from umg he's one of the casters there he's always in the community watching all of our shows and he's here live right now smiting how you doing brother I'm doing awesome, man. It's, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. I had a wonderful time watching Champs, and uh, I can't wait to see the next thing, PAX. So uh, it's going to be awesome. Well, thank you for coming on the show. And I just dropped some knowledge bombs about what is going down at PAX. What do you think of the decision to go from a single elimination bracket to now double elimination at PAX? Well, I think it's awesome mainly because it's just more Call of Duty for me to watch. So as you know, I'm a Call of Duty junkie. I love watching everything, um, but I'm excited, expecting to see some big things. I just, I, I don't know who's going to win. I want to say complexity right off the bat because who would bet against them? But uh, I'd love to see another team step it up this time and maybe dethrone them, but we'll see what happens. So let's talk first round matchups here. We talked about, uh, well, yesterday on the show, we announced that TK, Formal and Theory have announced that PAX is their last event with TK before the event even starts. Knowing 15 grand is on the line didn't affect their decision making. They wanted it to be known. So they are going to be playing in the very first round against Envy, a squad that was able to defeat them, but it went all the way to game five. Do you think that announcement is going to affect TK's chemistry at all? Do you think they could this time around upset Envy in that first round of the bracket? You know, I was actually thinking about that at work today. I was like, how, like, what's it going to be like when they go play? Is there going to be some contention? Are they, you, you know, Sharp said yesterday on the show that they're going to be scrimming with another player. So, you know, are, are they going to be scrimming together? Or there's a bunch of things going into this. I, I love TK. I love all the players there. Um, I just don't see how they're going to beat Envy unless for some reason they come together and play perfectly. And then like, let's say what happens if TK wins? Do they stay right. together or do they still break up? I hope they stay together. I love that squad. I, I didn't see this one coming. So hopefully PAX can draw them back together. And then on the other side, Curse Las Vegas has dropped Killa. He is not attending PAX. Instead, Mud Dog is playing in his place. How does Curse Las Vegas with Curse uh, Parasite 
Miracles, Ricky, and Mud Dog stack up in your mind against Strictly Business, who finished fourth at COD Champs? You know, Mud Dog, I think he's one of those guys that's just extremely underrated. He, he brings a lot to the table, especially with knowledge. If we remember last year, he was coaching Envy, uh, but he has the gun skill. He can, he can make plays. Um, but Killa is still that, that national champion or the world champion from last year, you know, part of that squad. Uh, I, I think that is a big hole for Mud Dog to fill, but I think he'll be able to fill it well. And I think you'll see a better communication throughout Curse LV. They won't have the, the you know, the, the little cat fights that they end up having or I don't I, I guess little arguments cat, I like cat fights. Arguments. that's, that's I mean, a good yeah. one though no they did get a little bit weird sometimes with their arguments and a little whiny but I think mud dog is going to bring like you said some very strong communication and shut that down before it even starts uh smiling I, I gotta get your thoughts here on nade shot as well making the transition to the casting booth this week and I know everyone always wants to see optic gaming now at least one player will be representing that team, and he's going to be dropping some knowledge in the booth. Well, you know, I'm excited for that. We, I mean, you watch his YouTube. He drops some knowledge bombs every once in a while, you know, gives gives the good um, input without giving away tons of strats. What, what I really want to hear from him is I, I want to hear about that whole optic uh, red push, you know, that what they actually beat... Um, complexity on i, I want to see and hear his thoughts on that i hope he talks about it while he's there but i think it's a good transition i mean we've seen rambo in the booth and he does an excellent job uh, I, I actually think it's going to be hard uh for nade shot to maybe hit that that rambo casting uh level Rambo's one of the best man he and tv he blow my mind every time i have them together with me in the booth but i i think like you said nade could be a. Uh definitely dropping some knowledge bombs it and I, I do i will make sure to grind him on that on that question about whose call it was to rush red on freight because that was like you said definitely some something fun to watch um revan's in the booth and i actually just got a text right now on the show sensor asked can i cast at pax when he's not on i think we should get sensor in the booth and i might match him up with nade shot there a little pro match on him pro up casting. with me Match them up with you? With Are you going to be I'll, at I'll PAX? No, I'm not going to be If at your PAX. beard was there, I would put you on camera for sure. <laughs> I'll um, be in Anaheim. <laughs> I like the sound of that one. All right, well, Smiting, well, we, we talked about PAX, but I want to get your predictions here. There's only six teams coming in. Two of them have a bye at least into round two. How does that stack up in your uh, leaderboard? Who do you have coming out one through six? Complexity is going to be first. Um, Cole number one. No I, doubt I, about it? No doubt about it. I Like... They, if you watched, they absolutely put it into another level against Envy. And I probably a lot of that had to do with Envy just got off that big emotional uh, roller coaster against Optic, which they did uh, terrific against Optic, actually. And then they had the big long break, so the hour long, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that might have affected them. The they adrenaline drops for sure in yeah. an hour. And they didn't do like their, their warm ups with their hands. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I still think Cole's unbeatable. Um, I'm writing this down, by the way. I I'm making a sweating right. fatty graphic after this. So, complexity number one. Okay, so complexity number one. I think, I don't think Envy's going to take number two. I think they're going to be number three. And my second spot Ooh. is going to be SB. And I'll tell you why. I think, I think they're a little mad about, you know, their placement this weekend. I think they can come out, and they have the slay. I mean, that team is is full of slayers. And if you look at complexity, complexity is also full of slayers. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the stats. Um, everybody in complexity was was top 15 in, in kill-death ratio during the bracket play. So, it's pretty um, good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. No For all more players, it's pretty good. Yeah, no other <laughs> team was in the top 50 or had four players in the top 15. SB had three players. Wow. It's pretty so, solid there. Yeah. It, I mean, they, they, they can slay. And uh, as long as they work together, I think they can do it. Um, but so I think it's going to be Cole, SB, um, Envy, and then I'm going to say, uh, or wait, not uh, FaZe. I think FaZe also, I about said Optic. That would have been embarrassing. That Anyways, FaZe, FaZe, I thought they had a disappointing um you know, weekend, especially after how well they did in the league. 
I think they're going to be a little energized, and I, I think they're going to bring it. And, uh, you know, Proofy and J-Cap combo, I think that works, man. They, those two are amazing together. Are you going to put FaZe above Envy in that third spot, or does FaZe get There's fourth place behind Envy? Fourth. Fourth. All right, yes. so, so Envy in your top three. So that puts uh, Curse Las Vegas and Team Caliber at fifth and sixth. Who gets the fifth spot? Um, I would have to say LV, and the only reason is because we talked about TK. You know, uh, you know, it's hard to say what their mental state's going to be in, how much they're going to be practicing with each other, or are Sharp and Gunjar going to be practicing, or not? Yeah, Gunjar, are they going to be practicing with methods and who, you know me for right. their fourth? So we'll see. Yeah, well, uh, I think that was a trick question because I don't even know if we have a fifth, sixth match. There's no money on the line there. But I just oh. wanted to get your opinion of who you thought would come out on top of that one. Um, honestly, I think TK slips in here. I think TK slips into the top four. I don't know if it's going to be uh, ahead of Envy or if it's going to be ahead of FaZe. What happens here? But I think that come tournament time, I know how good TK is. I saw how strong they're playing in group play. They can bring it, and having that revenge match against Envy, I think they're going to try and make a statement despite the team changes that will be coming up following PAX. Uh, well, I wanted to thank you for the insight here on these teams, but now let's uh, take a short commercial break. When we come back, I want to get your thoughts on COD Championships. Of course, today's show, we're talking about the top five upsets through the bracket. I don't have necessarily my favorite top five list, but the producer put together five very good games. I want to get your insight, Smiting, of which other matches you thought could finish in this list. We'll go to a commercial break. When we return, Smiting and I talk about COD Champs, who had some of the biggest upsets of the weekend. <laughs> 